EMA exponential moving average exponential moving average EMA point number A in EMA in EMA we give we give extra weights we give extra weights we give extra weights to recent observations to recent observations and less weights to earlier observations extra weights to recent observation and less weights to earlier observation now for example i want to do exponential moving average because uh, let's assume it's the covid time and we are doing 200 days daily moving average in that the last one month market got impacted significantly because of covid the 200 day average may not show this impact itself because you are giving equal weights to every information whereas the recent market movement has been a uh, very tough markets have crashed significantly so can i give more weights to this so for that purpose there is a formula to compute ema i'll come to the theory part again i'll give you the formula but let me explain the logical route and then i come to the formula so let's look at few questions first let's come to question 2 closing values of bse sensex from 6th to 17th day of the month of january of the year 2000 were as follows day date sensex value calculate ema of sensex during the period the 30 day simple moving average can be assumed as 15000 value of exponent is 0 0.062 give detailed analysis on the basis of your calculation let's uh, see how ema is computed first so for ema to start with i need an opening exponential moving average value opening exponential moving average value and this exponential moving average value will keep changing on a daily basis i need the opening value that opening value can be taken as 30 day sma 90 day SMA, 200 days SMA, 100 days SMA, 10 days SMA, 15 days SMA. So here they have given 30 day simple moving average of the Sensex can be assumed as 15,000 and there is an exponent which is given which is 0 0.062. I'll come to the formula everything in some time. So last EMA is 15,000. Today, the Sensex is at 14.522. Now, what this approach says is, you will have to, uh, if 30 day data is there, this becomes 31st day data. And I can take an average or I remove the first data of the last year, uh, that is the last month and take this new data and take an average. But it says no simple average concept. We'll have to calculate exponential moving average. This is given a weight of 0 0.062. This is given a weight of 0 0.062. Whatever exponent is there, there's a formula to calculate exponent also. There's a formula to calculate exponent also. When you are doing the calculation for the next period, it is given a weight of 0 0.062. This is given a weight of 1 minus this exponent. 1 minus 0 0.062 0 0.938 normally in a 30 day average calculation every observation will have a weight of 0 0.033 but here i'm giving weight of 0 0.06 to the recent observation this will be the new ema weighted average of this so i'll give a table approach to do the calculation but this is the concept the EMA will keep changing on a daily basis. The weight for the recent observation is 0 0.062.
the previous EMA has a weight of balance. So, 15,000 into 0 0.938, which is 14,070 plus 14,522 into 0 0.062, 900.36. Let me keep it as two decimal. Put together, the EMA now is 14,970.36. I'll give formula and all in some time. The new EMA is 14,970.36. What we do is we take the last EMA. So, let's write this. EMA calculation for day 1. I'll give table approach in some time, formula in some time. EMA calculation for day 1. Previous EMA, 15,000. Previous EMA, 15,000. Weight equal to 1 minus 0 0.062, whatever was the exponent. 1 minus 0 0.062. 0 0.938. New price. New price. 14,522, weight 0 0.062, weighted average, weighted average, we'll have to take a weighted average of this, 15,000 into 0 0.938 and 14,522 into 0 0.062, total of this is 14, 970.36. This is for day one computation. I'll give a table approach in some time, but this is the logical formula. We are giving extra weights to otherwise, if you do simple average, you do not attach any weights. EMA computation for day two. Previous EMA 14970.36 weight. 0.938 new price 14,925 weight 0 0.062 and weighted averages 14,970.36 into 0.938 plus 14,925 into 0 0.062. It is 14,967.55. This average will keep changing as we get new data. As we get new information, we'll keep seeing a changes in this uh, number. There is a formula which I say Metrel talks about. I'll give you the formula, but this is a logical computation. Take the previous EMA. The weight for them is 1 minus the exponent. New price whose weight is exponent, take a weighted average. Now, how do we do the calculation? Is you can follow this formula EMA of previous day plus or minus EMA adjustment. Plus or minus EMA adjustment. How you calculate this EMA adjustment? Whatever is the exponent we had into value as per step one. Into value as per step one. I don't want you to remember the formula. You can try to do the logical way also. That is do calculation on everyday basis or do this approach which is there. Now, I'll show a table approach to get to the answer. Let's start. Day value. We may need more columns. Let's first write uh, the data given. Day 1, 14,522. Day 2, 14,925. Day 5, only days on which trading has happened, 15, triple 2. Day 6, 16,000. Day 7, 16,400. Day 8, 17,000. Day 12, 18,000. Or you can number it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 also, doesn't really matter. This is the data. Previous EMA, we started with 15,000. We started with 15,000. Difference. Previous EMA 15,000. Difference. 
difference is how much is the gap between the previous EMA and the current data? Minus 478. Minus 478. One approach is to do weighted average like it is done here. Or you apply the table approach. EMA adjustment. Two decimal, I will keep it. This into the exponent 0 0.062. 0 0.062. New EMA, new EMA is old EMA plus or minus this adjustment 14970.36. 14970.36. Next time, use this difference is so much, adjustment is so much. New EMA is 14967.55. That weighted average I did. It will go on like this. So you will keep calculating like this. You take the value, take the previous EMA, find the difference, find the difference, do the adjustment. If prices are going down, EMA will go down. If prices are going up as compared to the EMA value, price. So originally EMA was 15,000, price was 14,522, price is lower than EMA, EMA has gone down. From 14,975 compared, price is still lower, EMA has gone down. Price went up, EMA has gone up as compared to the EMA value, as compared to the exponential moving average value. Now, the utility of this is you can put a chart for the normal value and the exponential moving average value. And if the normal value is cutting the EMA, then there can be a buy or sell signal. If it's not cutting it, then there will not be a buy or sell signal. If it is cutting, that is if it is touching, the normal value is touching the EMA value, then there can be a buy or sell signal. First complete the calculation. Every day you can do weighted average or you can do it in the table approach. I will wait for a minute or two. Please complete it. You can message me in case there are doubts. Okay, now if you put this in a form of a chart which I have already done, this is how the chart will look. The simple average data, the blue one is the uh, actual value and the orange line is the EMA. Whenever the blue line cuts the EMA line from the bottom, it is a buy signal. It is a buy signal whenever the blue line which is the actual value cuts the EMA value from bottom then it is technically a buy signal and if it cuts from the top that is if it cuts from here and moves like this then it is a sell signal then it is a sell signal so here there is a buy signal which is getting generated and when it started moving up beyond it has started going up beyond there is a signal which has come which indicates that ideally people should go ahead and buy people should go ahead and buy this security or invest in stock market when it is cutting from the down it is a buy signal when it's cutting from the top it is a sell signal that is what ema is all about if it's sometimes it will cut from the top and then starts further going up you will have to see how is it moving beyond also it cuts and then start coming down then it may again become a sell signal so charts are very difficult to read if it cuts and starts moving up it's a buy signal if it cuts and starts sliding down further again then it becomes again a sell signal. 
it becomes a cell signal so you'll have to see how is it if both are not interacting with each other then there is no signal then there is no signal which you will see in the next question